The way we consume and share news today, largely rooted in social media outlets, the reason why we decided it's important to look at what's buzzing online, like the Sung Gourmet reunion, which hasn't happened in four decades. Uh, what's happening with the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> and the Tegu Chimek Festival, also returning after a three-year hiatus for our Social Media Minute. We're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this Thursday? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, it is all good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, just a few more days. And I'm on a month long break from school. Yeah. Your other duty. <laughs> yeah. A massive duty at that. I was going to say, yeah. does this mean a finals is almost over? We don't have finals at our school. We don't have report cards at our school. We don't have grades at our school. Yeah, Erica, we need to carve out time to talk about this system <laughs> at your school. Yeah. It's entirely different, I knew. I just, yeah. I just assumed that you would still have some sort of grading system, mm-hmm. but no. 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 I've missed out. I really missed out. I was either born in the wrong generation. I could have excelled. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. All right, let's jump into our social media minute cover, starting with a reunion for a legendary rock band, to say the least. Um, I guess one of the members I identify more as a radio DJ yeah. than anything else. But Chersu, right? That's right. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're icons. They're <laughs> legends. Song Gulmei is embarking on a nationwide tour come fall, uh, starting September 11th, to be exact. Mm. The concert is titled... Yolmang or aspiration, <laughs> and it's going to kick off with a two-day show right here in Seoul. Um, the upcoming tour is a long-awaited <laughs> reunion of the band's two best-known members, Pechol Su and uh, Ku Chang Mo. And by long, I mean, well, you mentioned it, four decades, 40 years. And uh, <sighs> those two are probably going... 40 years? Dude, yeah. where did the time go? Honestly, I've yeah. seen, I've heard pictures to say that a number of times. Uh-huh. I'm sure Kuchang was shares the same sentiments. It's not like you count every year saying one down, two down, three yeah. down. Most of us just go about living. You know, um, it, it's funny because I, I've heard adults always it's, say... She oh, says it, as if she's not an adult. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like old yes! adults older than me. The elderly. Like my parents or my, my, my grandma yeah. a long time ago. They, they always used to say, oh, time goes by so fast. You know? In the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye, they say. And I'm really starting to feel that now <sighs> at my age. Like, if I think back to what did I do 10 years ago, it yes. literally seems like it was yesterday. Okay. It wasn't that long ago. And I think, okay, 10 more years from now, how old am I going to be? I'm like, oh my goodness. Now, there are several <laughs> theories as to why this is the way things yeah. are. Is it our depleting memory? Or are we just doing more and more into our adulthood, right? I mean, adulting is a hashtag for crying out loud. Yeah. It's tough there's a lot of obligations and expectations to meet and uh, you're right i'm sure these yeah. members are not saying yes 40 years it feels like <laughs> it it probably feels like yesterday for them yep, too yep. But, but it was a long time coming for the fans uh we cannot discuss the history of korea's rock music scene without mentioning this yeah. band in detail uh this band debuted back in 1979 they led south korea's rock music scene in the 80s uh, multiple hits i'm just gonna mention a few <laughs> Ojoda Madutsin Gude, Moyora, and Tom Bonsungan. And uh, when lead vocalist Kuchamo left the group back in 1984, the band continued with the mm. new members. Mm. Uh, Song Gulmei stopped performing after releasing its ninth studio album mm. in 1990. So it's been a while. Uh, actually, Song Gulmei and, and, and the other one that comes to mind is Puhar, right? Yes. They keep it alive. Haha, <laughs> Puhar alive. Um, <laughs> with, with the new nice, singers. Nice, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> and new band members. I should have been much more suave about that, right? <laughs> but yeah, they keep the band alive, yeah. uh, adding new singers. Singers, That's new right. members, yep. but y- you're absolutely correct in saying that Petros and Kutangmo is probably the yeah. more iconic That's members right. out of the group. Yeah, and two years ago, <laughs> during a press conference to mark the 30th anniversary of that long running show yeah. you, you mentioned earlier, Petrosu's music camp, hosted by Petrosu himself, yeah. uh, the singer slash DJ hinted at the time that Sung Gulmi might return <laughs> to the stage sometime in the near future. Two years ago. Uh, got a lot of fans excited at the time. And he said this I started. I started out as a rock band musician, so I want to end my career where I started. I mean, Petrus's music camp is iconic, and yep. he's interviewed some of the biggest here and abroad when That's they visited right. Korea. They actively said they want to be on the show. Yes. I don't know why Brianna's the only one that comes to mind. <laughs> that kind of sticks out to me like a yeah. sore thumb. But my point being, I'm sure he appreciated that, but he would want to go back to his, yeah, his roots. roots and right? this is his roots. Mm-hmm. Two years ago? I yep. know we had the pandemic, but can you imagine those <laughs> Hongrome fans? Like, so when is it happening? I know. Yeah. <laughs> All 
All right, so for the band's upcoming reunion concert, two hit songs by Sungur may have been covered by two younger artists as yes, well. Yes, uh, one of them is Suho uh-huh, from EXO, uh-huh. and uh, another is the indie rock band c h a n n a b i Oh, that's so and, cool. And uh, so the two songs that have been remade are Modu Ta Saranghari or Love All. It's mm. their 1984 hit song, mm. and uh, this song was covered by uh, Suho, mm. while c h a n n a b i remade Sesang Mansa or Everything in the World. This is their 1981 hit from their first album. Oh, look at that. Iconic tracks being remade, yeah. revamped. That's a lot of pressure <laughs> when the original is so good. I know. You don't touch it, right? I mean, that's kind of a common thread. Yep. But these days, I mean, I don't know. Putting a 2022 t- twist on it might be fun. I wonder if there's a whole story behind why they were yeah. chosen to do the cover songs. So apparently when Suho found out that his, you know, agency was uh, involved in this remake project. He jumped at the opportunity because he grew up listening to <laughs> Song Gulme in his home. Because of his parents? His parents apparently worshipped <laughs> Song Gulme. So apparently he said during a press conference that was held yesterday, he said, this is like a family honor. <laughs> <laughs> It's an honor for my family to That's be sweet. able to remake one of uh, his, uh, you know, his icon. Well, one of his biggest icons. Favorite. Honestly, uh, if songs. I was still an entertainment reporter, yeah. I would go interview Sue's right? parents. Yeah, that would be such a fun story. Fun story, right? Yeah. Bring the full story back to why mm. this is relatable music. What yes. about Tanabi? Oh, uh, Tanabi also the same. Mm. This is an indie rock band, and the yeah. lead vocalist Choi Jung Hoon. Yeah, he says all throughout my musical career, Song Gul Me has always been an inspiration. So it's a great honor to be involved in this project. Musicians, musician, if you will. Yeah. Uh, they had a press conference, like you said, where they did. Perform these remakes. Yes, right? and it was so funny. Uh, the two members of Song Gulme, uh, Pei Chosu and Ku Chang Mo, were there as yeah. well, and they were listening to those two, yeah. those two, oops, to perform, and they're yeah. like, oh. That's so nice. Ah, Look ah, how young they are. <laughs> I'm jealous. We used to be young, right? So this was apparently the conversation that was going on at the press conference yesterday. That is hilarious. Yeah. Youth. When you have it, you don't know that it's a <laughs> right. privilege, right? When it's gone, right. you're left thinking, oh, where have the years gone? Uh-huh. This is such an exciting time. Yep. All right. So Song Gourmet concerts coming up in September. September. And they're also going to perform in the U.S. next oh. year. And apparently that's going to be their final tour before they say finally that's a wrap really yep. okay these days <laughs> I'm skeptical I, I'm so skeptical because they say that and then the fans demand it and they're like okay maybe we'll come out of our retirement just once more okay all right, we'll leave it's it been there. known to happen <laughs> <laughs> the pop industry yep. all right let's move on to our second buzzword I'm trying to make sense of why this is a problem but yes let's provide the full mm-hmm. context a Tegu Chimek festival is returning for the first time in three years it's underway and it's going to take place all the way through until Sunday mm. like I mentioned before this is the first time that mm. uh, the Chimek festival is taking place since well ni- 2019 it was oh. cancelled in 2020 and 2021 because of course, of COVID-19. Uh, this festival kicked off for the first time in 2013, attracts one million visitors every year. It's oh, super popular. And it's massive. Yep. I didn't realize how big it was. It's massive. But it's c h i m e k It could be anywhere yeah. across South Korean Peninsula. So why Daegu? Uh, because Daegu is the birthplace of Korea's fried chicken industry. It all really? started after the Korean War. And some of the earliest chicken franchises here in South Korea opened their first stores in this city. Oh, look at that. I learned something new. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yep. uh, okay, so take with the home of yes. Korea's fried chicken industry. For how long will the festival run and anything special visitors can maybe look forward to yep. besides having fried chicken and beer? <laughs> well, this year marks the 10th anniversary, so there are some pretty exciting events in store for everyone. There's, of course, music. I mean, what's a festival without music? <laughs> uh, there's a live hip hop performance mm. every evening. There's also a gigantic tent where people can enjoy fried chicken and craft beer. While dipping their toes in ice cold water. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. It's kind of like poolside, a smaller one, yeah. but still. Uh, there's also a Chimek booth that resembles a Pujang Macha, uh, those iconic street food tents that people love. Where have they gone? Yeah. And uh, the, the event is supporting um, emerging fried chicken brands. Okay. So two have been selected to open booths mm. near the main stage. Mm. And uh, because it's so important, all of the disposable cups used at the festival are made from biodegradable. 
biodegradable cornstarch. Look at that progress. Yeah. I mean, one million people gathering for chicken and yes. beer. That sounds like a lot of plastic yep. to be wasted. Now, if we can use biodegradable mm-hmm. materials, great. Now, unfortunately, it looks like not everyone is having fun at this year's festivities. Yeah. Uh, there were some 30 vegan activists at the site. Uh, that says everything, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, it really does. Okay. And uh, they were protesting the festival, and also they were p- protesting the consumption of chickens raised at industrial facilities. They're mm. like, why not replace chicken with other mm. uh, more eco-friendly. eco-friendly ingredients like mushrooms or broccoli or carrots? These are great points. Yeah. They are 30 vegan activists, so yeah. they have the right to protest something that doesn't you know, fit perhaps their own agenda as yeah. what they believe in. Uh, however, but the festival... Fried, uh, uh, fried right. mushroom, fried broccoli, and beer festival doesn't quite have the uh, same <laughs> ring, does it? Or the brand power. <laughs> there you have it. Yep. And again, you mentioned it, right? It's the birthplace yes. of Korea's fried chicken right. industry. That yep. makes sense. There you have it. The full <laughs> story. And before we let you go, we do have time for our final story. Eiffel Tower apparently riddled with rust and it's in need of repair. Badly in really? need of repair. Uh, there was a report that was leaked. It was a confidential report that uh, suggests the monument is in a poor state and riddled with dust and the tower needs a full repair, according to this report. But instead, it is currently being given only a, a cosmetic makeover for the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris. So uh, this renovation was supposed to have started a long time ago, okay. but then it was delayed and delayed again because okay. of the pandemic and whatnot. So they have very little time left. Uh-huh. So it looks like they're going to apply a fresh coat of paint, only 5% of what was originally planned. Uh, okay. And I'm that just... is doing damage, even more damage to the currently standing tower than the any kind of re- yeah. repair even something remotely close to it but you're right 2024 uh, summer games is not that far off no. so dismantling and redoing just doesn't sound realistic Correct. so <laughs> i get you know it. when this tower was it. completed back in 1889 yeah. it was for the world expo yes that year uh, it was only supposed to stand for 20 years <laughs> it was supposed to be dismantled <laughs> but here we are 133 years later and it's still standing and of of course it needs repair from time to time but this is the 20th paint job that it's going oh, under oh no yeah okay so I, I, I can see why this is because the last time I went to London yes. right the Big Ben was under construction mm-hmm. and everyone was so disappointed oh it's finally opening isn't it's, it it's open yeah, now yeah I saw that on the news but this was years ago right. well three years ago right before the <laughs> pandemic yes. and I was so disappointed because it's not as if I make regular trips mm-hmm. to London and it's such an iconic figure so I understand why it's kind of a big risk you have to time it perfectly if there is such a thing yep. to repair an iconic piece. However, you are you raised such a good point. It was supposed to stand for 20, 20 years. years. It wasn't designed to last as long. Yeah, But under proper maintenance, yeah. uh, apparently experts say that the tower can stand forever. Okay. Yeah. Under proper maintenance yep. being a key word That's there. Right. So all it's getting is a cosmetic facelift for the summer games yep. in two years' time. But they will have to address this issue eventually. Eventually. Yep. Maybe start planning now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erica. <laughs> Pleasure. Have a great day. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.